my career as a radiographer, I realised that it wasn't going to satisfy my creative urges. I'd always loved making things, and from a very young age, I loved fashion. So I decided to go back to university and study fashion design. And at that time, as a radiographer, I was in a great position to support myself through university and be able to study and, and pay my way. But I never saw the two worlds coming together. It's not something I planned or imagined. And when I graduated, I spent two years working for other designers and also working part-time as a radiographer while I built up my, my fashion career. And it was one day I was doing a CT scan. It was a head scan. And it occurred to me as the images were coming up on the screen how textural and graphic they were. And as slice by slice built, I saw images growing and then receding. And there was a sort of poetry and a rhythm in the way the images were, were forming in front of my eyes. And at that moment, I wondered whether it might be possible to actually translate those images into a fabric. And I had no clue how to do that. I had some experience working with a knitwear designer, but only in cutting and constructing knitwear, not in actually knitting the fabric. So I was struck with this kind of bolt of excitement, and I thought this could be the way that I could build my brand and create something new and say something that's personal to me and, and send out a new message in fashion. So I took a, a stack of CT scan images to a knitwear factory in Italy and I began programming. And when I say programming, I was assigning a pixel, the pixels in each CT scan image to a stitch on the machine. And I began with an enormous CT head scan and I spent hours trying to assign pixels only to discover that what I was essentially trying to do was knit a fabric that was ten times too wide for the machine and that would have blown its memory and probably caused it to crash. So I then had to devise a way to rescale the images without losing the essence of the CT scan and the texture and the graphics that I loved so much. So. I spent some time developing that and assigning every individual pixel in the image to a stitch and then I got really excited about the idea of mixing yarns. So I began experimenting with wool, cotton, silk, metal, plastic, anything I could get my hands on I was testing. So eventually I managed to knit my first CT sinus scan fabric and I turned it into a catsuit which is still one of my favourite pieces. But from that, I then built a whole collection. So I was incredibly excited that my idea had worked, and I took my collection from the knitwear factory in Italy back to London and started preparing for London Fashion Week, where I was presenting this new kind of knitwear. And then when I got back to London, I was struck by fear and doubt. I suddenly thought to myself, what, what am I doing? What, how is this going to be received? You know, what is the fashion press going to think? What will the buyers think? Will they take me seriously? Will they think it's a gimmick? Will they just not understand? And so I decided to just keep the fact that, that I'm a radiographer a secret and I thought I'll just say I, I got the CT scans and I was inspired and you know, it, it sort of is loosely based on that. And then when I got to London Fashion Week and I started talking to buyers and press, I saw how engaged they were with the idea. There was a diverse reaction, sort of ranging from disgust to utter excitement. But what I realised straight away was that it was, it was starting a conversation and it was engaging people in a new way. It was making them think about fashion being inspired by science in an intricate and considered way, not in a, a one-season way or a sort of flash-in-the-pan piece of inspiration. 
So that really motivated me and pushed me on, and I decided to continue exploring CT scans in different parts of the body and experimenting with new yarns, new machines, and I pushed on, and then I was fortunate enough to be granted an artist residency at the Hospital Club in London, and from that, I was connected to the Allen Institute in Seattle. And the Allen Institute for Brain Science has a huge atlas of brain images, and they presented me with a series of images uh, that were Nissel stain. And this was a kind of image I'd never seen before, and the way that I'd always worked was to research and look at CT scans and choose the ones that, that spoke to my aesthetic and the ones that I felt passionate about and that sparked off ideas. So this was quite the reverse. I was having to work with images that didn't have the rhythm I was used to and I had to really push myself to understand how to bring them to life in fabric. But one big thing that that taught me was the importance of collaboration. And I understood from that moment on that if my work was going to grow and my message was going to continue to spread, I needed to collaborate with all sorts of people, scientists, artists, other designers. So I decided at that point, whenever I got an opportunity to collaborate, I would say yes. And I have, and it's got me into trouble at times, um, and meant I haven't slept a lot, but uh, recently... I've done a collaboration with a choreographer called Riccardo Buscarini and the task for Riccardo's piece called Athletes was to create costumes with an exoskeleton. So I delved into spinal research and worked with a prop maker and created these foam spines which were interlinked. Uh, and then from there I've gone on to another collaboration with a London based artist called George Petru. George is fascinating and has a, a great story of his own. The film that I opened the talk with today is my first collaboration with George. And aside from making films, he builds phantoms for trainee surgeons at the Imperial College in London. So he sculpts them from mixed media. They're very, very lifelike, very realistic, and he builds the muscle tissue, the vasculature, the subcutaneous fat, and the skin, all from a mixture of silicon and latex and all sorts of materials. So what we've done is we sat down and worked out a project. So the next collaboration we'll be doing is using his technique of creating blood vessels with silicon and melding that with my CT scan knitwear. That's starting straight after Ted. So my message that I'd like to spread to all of you today is... If you're passionate about something, if you have two ideas that you don't think can go together but you want to explore them, go for it. There's nothing that's impossible and when you have passion and you have drive and you're excited by something, let your imagination run wild and start working with people that you never would have otherwise worked with and learn and grow. Um, it's worked for me, and I'm sure that it could work for all of you too. Thank you.